Cane Creek Road winds its way out of Moab following the Little Cane Creek Valley. It's a scenic drive that offers mountain bike trails, hiking trails, picnic areas, and campgrounds. Once the road veers away from Cane Creek, you start climbing up towards Hurra Pass. The pass is at an elevation of around 4,700 feet, and it's the highest viewpoint you will have along this entire trail. We didn't really have any plans in mind for that night, but we wanted to do the trail all the way to the end, possibly hike the Chicken Corner footpath, and depending on how long that took, we'd either camp on the trail or make our way back to town.
So we made it to Chicken Corners, signed with all the rubber chickens back there. And we're not quite done with the trail. There's a little ways to go. Uh, it's getting late in the afternoon. You can probably see the sun back there. Uh, we may just camp along the trail and then make our way out tomorrow so we're not doing it in the dark. There are uh, campsites. As long as you stay in a pre-developed campsite, you're good. Uh, so we're going to keep going. and. See how it turns out. So we made a wrong turn at the chicken sign and we went down past this tree right here. Did a cool little rock climb feature, but that is not part of the Chicken Corners Trail. We came from that direction and we should have kept the chicken sign to our left, but instead we didn't. So now we're back on track. Good morning. It's just before sunrise and we are in the rooftop tent. I uh, set up a camera last night to do time lapse for the stars. At some point the battery died. I'm not sure if it got enough, but we'll find out. It's been very <laughs> windy up here all night long, but it's an epic spot. There's nobody around. We are almost at the very end of Chicken Corner Trail in a designated camp area. There's a few of them along the trail as you come out.
So this is the Chicken Corner Trail at the end of Chicken Corners Road. Well, everybody calls it Chicken Corners. Apparently it's supposed to be Chicken Corner because the road is just the road to get to this trail. And the entire thing is named after the one corner that everybody chickens out on, which is right out here at the end. And it looks pretty bad from a distance. We're gonna walk up here and see just how bad it is. It might be one of those things I wouldn't do without a rope. It is a long way down. Oh, it's not so bad. All right. Oh, wow. This is Chicken Corner. Aptly named. It's not so bad. Looks a lot worse from a distance. You good? Yeah. Good half
well we're back on pavement now so we're almost back into moab back into town it was an awesome time didn't break anything ourselves or the car i'd call that a very successful off-road trip yeah the car is still intact i think we only used a half a tank of fuel yeah there and back so mm -hmm. not bad had a really nice night camping a little windy but we can deal with that um lots of people out here today it's a saturday so it was pretty busy friday was dead empty we didn't see hardly anybody i, I think we passed two vehicles maybe one truck and a off-road side by side mm -hmm. yeah that was it so yeah all in all awesome time all right we are uh west on i-70 towards buckhorn draw road this is the start of it right here you pull off the highway this little pit stop area and uh, we're about to head north uh, out into the blm land in the wilderness and um, we won't be camping out there tonight we're gonna head to capitol reef and camp there tonight um, but we're gonna go check out buckhorn draw see what it has to offer the first glimpse that we've had of this area is really pretty and uh, scattered snow still in the area which you know us Florida folks are enjoying Yeah, so the first time we stopped, this whole rock face was in the direct sun, and it was much harder to see not only the pictographs, but there's a few little petroglyphs here that are pretty cool. Couldn't see them at all the first time. If we would have read this infographic, we would have known there were petroglyphs here. <laughs> I actually read every single other one, but I had missed this one <laughs> the first time. So we're hiking out to the dinosaur track. It's a neat little hike so far. It's real close. There's the car. We'll see where the actual dinosaur track is. If it's the one I'm thinking of, it's a big one with a ring of stones around it. Yep.
There it is. That's awesome. Should I put my hand out there for a comparison? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely be back. This is a good spot. We'll probably be back in winter too, so it's empty. Yes. Like it is now. <laughs> Maybe spend a day or two here. So we're headed out and we wanted to make one last stop. This is the San Rafael Bridge and it's actually a swinging bridge. And it's a 160 foot suspension bridge. <laughs> I have no idea what he's doing. Are you trying to get it to swing? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little more heavy duty than I expected. Man, those are some cables. Look at that cable. Cable in question. Wow. Nice. That's awesome. So I realized we hadn't shown our drawer system on video yet. So we're stopped here at San Rafael Bridge to make lunch. And this is a little drawer system I made uh, before we left Florida. So we can keep everything fairly organized. Uh, just Walmart Sterilite bins. There's some room in the front for miscellaneous items like paper towels and water. Accessible jug of water. Bags. Yep. This makes life so much better. We've camped so many times in the past where everything just gets all a jumble in big bins and it drives both of us crazy. So we actually have the bins numbered. Oh one through six on the top, seven through 12 on the bottom. And it's more like a mental number, so everything always goes back in the same bin. So although it looks a hot mess back here, we know what's what and what's where, and you know, like cooking supplies is in one, but paper plates is in four. So bread's always in three. And we tried to uh, put things that we use the most on the top layer and the things used less frequently, of course, on the bottom layer, but this is just what works for us and I'm sure it'll evolve over time. Yeah, there's already some changes we need to make. When you don't have time or you don't want to set up a um, full table at camp, you just slide that out and then you've got a nice work little area. work surface here. Now, I stole this idea from somebody else on YouTube. I'll find his video and post a link to it somewhere. So we're stopped at an overlook on our way to Capitol Reef National Park and this view is just breathtaking, especially as we're coming up on sunset here. So here we are at Capitol Reef National Park. 
This is the campground that we stayed at last night. We rolled in about 6.30. Really nice campground. Got some wildlife hanging out outside the tent with me. And get this, the bathrooms are heated. And given that it was in the mid 20s, maybe even a little bit colder last night and right now, a heated bathroom is quite wonderful. Time to make some breakfast. So here in Fruita at Capitol Reef National Park, they have all of these orchards throughout the park. Obviously in winter, nothing's in season right now. But when it is season, you can actually come and pick the fruit for free. Uh, there's signs that say, what orchards are available for you pick and what areas are not open yet. But I thought this was really cool. Um, many of these trees were planted in the 1800s and uh, supported about 10 families and had a very wide variety of fruit. On the next episode, we explore more of the Utah backcountry and the Grand Staircase National Monument.